G'day. And uh, hello. Yes, well, look, I've got the shits. <laughs> As you can see. Yes, welcome back to my channel. Basque, why do you leave your bloody toys here? Right. Uh, <laughs> she's off eating that now. Um, this lovely kit. This is a good kit. There's nothing wrong with this kit. I've got no problems with this kit. It's what it is. It has a few failings. We'll talk about those. But look, um, Amazon decided in their infinite wisdom just to whack some stickers on it. I mean, here's what it actually looked like, right? Whack some stickers on it, throw it in the mail, and thought it could travel, you know, quite a few thousand kilometres down under and come here in one piece. Well, it didn't. It exploded. Look, it completely... This, this was crushed completely, and this exploded out. I'll show you some photos of that. And the other end, well, it didn't fare a lot better. At least the, the tape held, but it was basically burst open. And it was just an absolute mess when it got here. And when I opened it up, the sprues had all been compressed and stressed. And you can see the sprue joints. Oh, Basca's running around with that little plastic turd underneath the bench. <laughs> At least she's getting something out of it. And I am extremely disappointed. Now, I have got stuff from Amazon before. I have got kits delivered to me all over the world for the last half century. I've never seen anything as stupid as this, that some idiot just put a sticker on a flimsy Revel box without even adding any packing or doing anything and thought, yeah, that'll make its way to Australia. You friggin' drongo. It's never going to happen. Never, ever. Okay? So, um, <sighs> vent over. <laughs> Let's have a look at the kit. Roll the music. <laughs> Now, what could have been the saving grace for this one, and I think has stopped there being more damage and loss of parts than could have happened, is the um, the box is very full. Very full indeed. Uh, you get some Revel kits, and you know it's a lovely big box, and you open it up, and there's only a few sprues in there, and everything's just rattling around in one bag, breaking itself. Nope, not at all. Everything here is pretty well individually bagged, or at least groups of sprues are. Instructions, we'll have a look at those in a sec. You get um, some rigging line. Um, it's not bad this, and um, I could probably wax it up and use it for this one, especially at this scale. You get um, instructions, and all of this survived. All of this luckily was packed in tight. And so despite the fact there was a great big hole at one end of this box, which luckily the guys at DHL, who actually had some bloody brains and some common sense, and they taped the box up when they could see there was a problem. So that stopped everything exploding out the end. Now you can see straight away... What's happened here, I mean, those sprues are rooted and there's there's stress on there. Now, luckily, that is the bottom of the boat. It's along the keel, which is an easy spot to fill and sand. And that's that's quite smart. In fact, that's good engineering by Revel. These appear to be only sticky tape together, which is really nice, which means I can get into them fairly easily. What sort of level of quality have we got? Well, it's clean. There's a plimsoll line mark there. There's some bumps here. Maybe there's there's something goes on there, some sort of torpedo launches or something. Or is that meant for the stand? I'm not sure. I have a look at the instructions. It's a bit silly, isn't it? Having a couple of big bumps on the side there. We shall see. Must be something. Hope it's something important. There's very little detail. It's very devoid of detail. It's very clean. Then again, the boat may have been. Um, there's certainly a bit of flash here above the um, the horse there. That's a bit flashy, but that's the only complaint so far. And so it is falling, falling off. That one's okay. That one's basically come out reasonably clean. But no, there's not much detail. So not much report there. It is very cleanly moulded, apart from those horses being a little bit um, a little bit grubby. It's it's very cleanly moulded. So we'll cut those shortly and see how those halves go together. As that's what we're doing in the videos now. We do a dry fit. There's no point in me just saying, oh, it looks like a nice kit in the box. We do a dry fit and we might be able to see some problems. Now, again, everything's in individual bags, which is rather nice. Well done there, a Revel. And here we have the deck. Now, we have got some nice detail here. There are some wood. There's like a um, wood veneer deck you can buy for this. Honestly, why would you bother at this scale and with that moulded the way it is, with that detail, 
all the little wooden slats are individually molded there. There's no reason you can't paint that wood, use my wood effect, and then run a wash underneath to bring out the, uh, the breaks between the planks. I'm surprised at how flash free this is. A lot of rebel kits like the Bounty. I mean, here's a broken sprue, but we can live with that. You get those. Uh, basically, the parts don't look too bad. Now, some people have complained about the screws. I can't see what they're on about. They, um, they're angled, they're veined. They don't look too bad at all. They're, um, there's only two points to cut off, and it's very thinly. Very, the sprue gate is incredibly thin there. So um, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Shouldn't be a problem at all. I think we've got rudder there, um, prop shaft. This is interesting. This is the bridge. This is the bridge. And um, there is a photo etch kit that really makes this zing. And I'm, it's only a shekel for the photo etch kit, honestly. So, um, I mean, I paid about six shekels for this kit, which I thought was a really good price. And it would have been a hard to find kit. This is the thing. I bought it on Amazon this strange way. And even though it was Amazon Australia I was on, they said the kit will come from America. I went, oh, okay. I've had other products from Amazon come from America. No problems at all. No problems at all. But anyhow, Georgia, somebody down there in the department in Georgia needs their ass kicked because you do not slap a bloody label on a Revel box and think it's going to travel halfway around the world, dickheads. Yeah, anyhow, enough of that. Again, here's some wood texture and there's no need for a wood veneer kit. No, we'll paint that. That, that looks really good. So, so far, that is looking really nice, and we'll cut that part out shortly, and we'll do a dry fit. And we've got a lot more detail on this sprue. Again, some um, some wood deck pieces there. You can see that. Um, probably parts of the torpedo launchers, not sure. I mean, this is a fast attack boat. It's got a lot of armament, and we're starting to see some of that here. Some machine guns. Now, there is a photo etch upgrade for the armament and I think it's well worth getting. It's a Griffin one. At least it'll give me the barrels and a few other things which um, I would put on this just for the sheer fact that I will smash them. Some people have complained about the thickness of the rails. Honestly they don't look too bad because I would have just put some uh, half millimeter brass rods in like I often do and replaced but I really don't see a problem. They're nice and clean and um, again, the sprue points, I don't know if you can see, but the, the sprue gates, right, are really thin. They're really thin. They're, they're wide that way, but you look the other way, they are incredibly thin. So it's quite good. Some nicely molded little pieces there. We'll go into those in more detail later. Some more of the wood, some more there of the bridge. And that sprue looks very good. I have no complaints with that. And it doesn't look like we've got any damage. I can't see any parts that are broken. Everything was nice and clean. And do you notice it's pretty well flash free? I mean, the only flash I've seen so far are those horses. Uh, they're not horses as in... <laughs> no, they're, um, they're where you run your anchor chain out, right? It's a little thing the anchor chain runs through. There are two of these. And here we can see some of the what's happened. These have been pushed so hard I can see parts that are bent. But not only that, they are just about compressed into each other. Yeah, the... Um, the act of squashing this kit, these ones have taken some of the brunt. So I'd say these were probably on the bottom of the top and the hull were on the other side. So those other sprues were sandwiched between and might have been protected. But this is well and truly jammed. Now whether Rebel intended that, I don't know. If you have one of these kits and that's how it comes, let me know. Otherwise I'm blaming Amazon Georgia. Yes. Now on the shield, gee, the, the shield actually looks quite good. So I don't know. Um, Basque, what are you doing? <laughs> She's playing with something down there. Uh, doesn't look too bad at all, actually. There's a bit of gunk in there, but really, the only injection points I'm seeing are uh, basically hidden away on the side you're not going to see. So that's either size of a gun mount. And, um, you know, things are looking pretty good. Look at these tiny little fine railings. These, I think, are part of the arrangement with the gun. The guns themselves, they're not hollowed out. I mean, I'd replace the barrel by bare minimum so I could get a nice hollowed out end on my barrel. But actually, these railing parts don't look too bad. I mean, you wouldn't want to slap a lot of paint on them. But if you keep them sort of, if you do a good job painting and keep them fairly, uh, you know, light coats. And I mean, the damn thing's grey, so it's not going to be that hard. Oh, first broken part. So the only part that I can see that's actually been broken is um, 
It's this little one. I'm checking on the other sprue. Yeah, the other sprue is intact. So um, that's the only thing we seem to have lost. Everything else appears to be in good nick. It really does. I mean, I was worried about all these, these little fine little parts that go around the guns. Now, I built some of these guns up for my um, U-boat. And I did them with the photo etch kit. And, oh, that was, a, that was a challenge. It was a challenge. But this is 172nd scale, not the 1144 that my submarine was. Well, there's a flash. Tiny bit of flash. There's not much. I mean, there's so little flash on this that it'll be really easy to clean up. So, um, there's a bit of flash there. There's a little bit. You know, it wouldn't be a rebel kit without there being some flash. But there's little screws there for the, um, for the torpedo. But it looks like you've got to cut out the gates. Although that might have been a smart idea by then. Oh, no. They're twin screws. Okay, so they're not gates. Twin screws. Well, that's nice. So those screws there for the torpedoes are really good. Well, everything I'm seeing, oh, there's a little bit of flash there. I'm not seeing a lot of damage, so thank goodness for that. And that's what I needed to. I needed to go through this box anyway, and I thought I'd share it with you. We have the typical Revel kind of um, layout. We've got a photograph of the model, which is a repeat of the uh, photograph that's on the box. You get history, not a lot actually, normally the history would be filling everything. You only get a short history here. Um, not even that actually, let me read it. It just says, need spare parts. And all it basically tells you about is there's no history. Well, there you go. Now, you get an explanation of the usual Red Oil symbols. They're actually pretty obvious. I, it's, it's very rare I have to go and check them. They're one of the few kit makers where, I mean, the time thing means it's going to take a bit of time before it glues, you know. Glue and not glue, pretty obvious, right? And then you've got, this means optional part, because it's got to think. You've got to think about it, which one do you want? 2X or 3X or 4X means you're going to make more versions of this, okay? And this one is just decals, right? Soak them in water, away you go. So basically, you know, cut, tape. Um, this one's always an interesting one. It's the only one that I had to actually look up once. And it just means what we're showing you is how the parts would look if they're together. All right, that's an interesting one. So they show that when there's an assembled thing, but the idea is you've got to glue them like that. So there you go. Drill a hole, um, basically repeat it on the other side. Use your black thread, which is not black, it is brown. Tie and glue, and use your decal softener. There you go. Colors, now, I don't really like the way Rebel does this, honestly. Uh, you get at least their number and what it is. But quite often, you'll get mixes. Uh, it's not too bad in this one. Sometimes it's like three or four different Rebel colors just to get a mix, which is, you know, often if they're German subjects, come on, you're a German company. <laughs> you know, surely you've got the RLM colors or, um, or whatever they were, especially, well, the Kriegsmarine, essentially. Were, were, the, um, were the Schnell boats Kriegsmarine or were they sort of army? That's hard to say. It's like the uh, Landwolver Schleppers weren't actually Kriegsmarine. They were part of the army, you know. So, um, hmm. Interesting. Anyhow, you get all your colours there, they're marked, and I'll often go through and try and mark through in the instructions what thing colours things should be painted. So, you know, like here it says A and E, and I can't remember that. Well, that's um, A is basically the wood colour, and E is a grey, okay? Stone grey, so it'll be a fairly light grey. Okay? Well, yeah. So I'll work that out, and I'll just go through and I'll, I'll mark every single one of them. So as I'm going, if there's something that needs to be painted because it's going to be inside, like here, this appears to be inside the bridge arrangement, it's probably best to paint those first. Um, like with most things with ships, paint your parts as much as you can before you assemble it because a lot of things get hidden or they're inside and you can't get to them or there's so many bits and pieces. I mean, you paint the hull before you put the decks on. You paint the decks before you put any of the superstructure on. You paint all the guns before you mount them to your superstructure and your decks. You paint everything before it goes on. And you'll have a much easier job and a much more presentable model. Revel's usually very easy to follow, I find. They give you only a few things to do in each step. As I said, the icons are quite obvious. The, um, the colour markouts are there. Uh, you just need to check and see that, you know, that basically there aren't any mistakes. I've rarely found anything. Usually the instructions are pretty good. They're, they're simple, they're easy, great. Admittedly, their kits are not hugely complex, usually. Uh, this one has got a, a bit of fiddliness, but Rebel kits are fairly easy. They go together reasonably well. There's a few that are horrors. They're usually the ones out of um, Rebel America. They're going to save shut down. <laughs> but Rebel Germany, especially if they're doing a German subject, 
The kits are usually very good, like the submarine I made. Excellent. Fit was brilliant. So the bridge here, yep, yeah, I will be looking at the photo etch kit for that. It's not a lot. It's, it's only a shekel for the photo etch kit. And um, it allows me to open up more of those um, more of those ports, um, those hatches, so that I can have more things open and they add a lot more detail. And I think it's actually worth it. There's um, not much else I want to do in photo etch apart from putting gun barrels on. And we'll see if it's worth getting that full photo etch kit from Griffin for the guns or if the plastic parts, they don't look too bad actually. So, um, okay, here we go. And you'll be putting on the decks here. So the usual sort of thing, glue the hole together, put the decks on. Although I usually, my trick usually would be to glue the hole together and wait till that's cemented, putty it, fill it, because you'll do a lot of work on that, which will require you flipping it over. You don't want to break anything. Once you've got the hole, okay, dry fit in the deck so that you keep its shape. Um, we'll even do that while you're gluing and holding it together. But don't glue the deck in until the absolute last minute. And then even paint the hole. Like, you know, basically put the tape lines on, paint the plimsoll, all the rest of it. Get that hole pretty well ready to go before you put your deck in. My method always is to work in levels, you know. Get a level done, move on another level. Get a level done, so on. This is why it's hard to paint ship kits usually once they're assembled. Because the levels being that... Everything's under something else, under something else, and so on and so on. It's not an aircraft where basically there all it is. Paint that side, paint that side. All you do is paint the interior first. No, in a tank, who cares? Build the whole thing and paint it. Because it's basically going to be all camo colour. Very rare that any little bits of different colours. Now, ships are different. Some ways they're a bit like cars. You've got to work on each individual um, sub-assembly and get that just right and move to the next one. Which will become apparent when I build this. Actually, I wouldn't mind building this soon. I've got so many things I want to build soon, but seeing as the box is rooted, I might actually get into this, because it doesn't look that complicated. Uh, here's where you get to use your string. You get your string on the uh, bow there, which is you know, you, where you would run through the horses to some anchors. A stand, which I'm not going to use. There's, as I said, there's the screw. There is the um, assembly there for the one-off. There's three, isn't there? Yeah, there's three props, prop screws. And um, the assembly there, which looks very simple. I would be putting that on as much as possible, although with the screws in between, it's a bit of a bugger, in between the rudder and the shaft, um, that makes it a little bit difficult to paint. Well, not impossible, because you could spray it all, because it's probably going to be grey. Everything's going to be grey. What does it say? F. 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 Yes. Friggin' grey. Yeah, they're not even... Sometimes at least the letters match the sort of names. F. Anthracite matte. Well, that's actually nearly a black. So, yeah, we could do that, and then we could put the um, we could paint the little brass screws. We don't glue them, and I mentioned they'd say not to. Well, they don't say that, but but actually, because they're friction fit between two pins, you could probably not glue them, so they could spin. If you did that, then um, even if I put a tiny bit of that um, liquid tape on there, just so they don't fall out, I'll be able to rotate them and paint them bronze be my preferred way of doing it. So again, solutions. This is the thing. You look for solutions, ways you can do things. So rudders, bits and pieces. See, a lot of this then I would build up first. All, all this stuff that goes in the bottom of the hull, I'd build that up way back here when I put the hull together so that I could then paint it in one go. So you could do it, or you could paint the parts and glue them on. But you're going to get a much nicer look if you put those in, especially as you'll probably want to fill some of the seam lines there with a bit of white PVA glue so that it looks nice and neat. So yeah, I would probably want to put all those parts in, putty it up, smooth it all out, and um, see how I go. And then paint it all, and then basically start building the ship up from there. So there's this clever little arrangement here. I'm not quite sure what this is yet, but it looks rather interesting. It's um, some little device for depositing something. Who knows? So obviously a flap comes out there. It's a little outboard motor. Yeah, we'll have to look that up, won't we? If you know what that is, let me know. Because I don't. Not at this point. I said I'm, I'm not in the best condition at the moment. I haven't done much research. I will do better as I build this kit. For now, I'll just ask the random washed. What is it? Um, there's your anchor. Lovely. Got some um, some short rails going in there. Now you've got this is the assembly at the bow here, which is going to take a machine gun. So that is um, well, that looks more like um, that West Bridge. And those are binoculars for the bridge. That's what that is. Uh, more of the bridge work. I said I really am leaning towards getting the PE kit to upgrade that bridge. And there's those little uh, little guys. Oh, look, the first time we've got a little question mark. And it says, do you want to do them with K? I bet your K is, is white. L, L won't be red. Very rare on a warship to have red. Um, flip 
flip back to our colors. What are we looking for? L, K and L. K and L. Um, yellow. Well, it's M, sorry. No, Rouge Carmine, which is red. L is red, yep. And K is white. So, yeah. Um, and M is yellow. So they are rather bright. <laughs> so that is, yes, yellow, red, and white. They'll be rather bright. I think I'll paint them up. They look really really bright. They look lovely, which is what I did basically on the side of the uh, land washer slip. I actually painted their orange on there, which seemed to be a color. More detail going to the bridge. This bridge is really nicely detailed. There's so much stuff going in there. And as I said, you'd, um, you'd paint those parts up probably on the sprue even, and then just um, make sure they've got clean, plastic points like scrap to paint off where they're going to join and assemble them that way and you've got a couple of funnels funnels are good yeah now you have a piece of acetate it is in there somewhere I put it somewhere safe so I think it's tucked away because I was worried about it when I was going through all the parts of the oil gosh I forgot the acetate yet yeah, there it is that's the acetate right and if you don't know acetate it's very thin plastic film and on there they have those windows marked out for you which is great because if they had been done in plastic, like if they were done in polystyrene, they'd be quite thick and they'd be really well at uh, scale. So making it a um, acetate film piece and then having you cut it out, you just have to be very careful cutting it out. And they've also said score very carefully, score on all the points where it's going to bend. So um, yeah, that should look quite nice. Should look quite nice. And then here you've got all well, this just. I'm not sure what that is. That's showing you rope. You've got, you got rigging on this. Can you believe it? you actually got rigging on a motorboat. But that's nice. I like that. Lots of bits and pieces and ancillaries and things go on the deck. It's, it's quite lovely. There's quite a lot of detail. See, more, more, more. And um, there's your, what are you, your little life rafty booty things. Your little rings. And um, then those railings go on. I, I don't know. We'll see. What I might do is it might be a good good chance for me to make up a set out of brass, see how it looks compared to the plastic part. And decide but they actually don't look bad out of the box and um, that would be a lot of work it's doable it's a lot of work to um, do that in brass and again they've got you doing some rigging here at the stern so the ropes here at the stern are oh, there obviously metal railings but here at the stern that's um that's rope right building up the armament we haven't done that to this point so I'll need to go through this in detail and see what those parts are like and decide whether it's um it's worth getting that full griffin set or just buy some barrels Usually just buying the barrels is probably all you need. You know, you'd buy, that'd be a standard MG barrel. And um, these ones look the same, actually. So I'll look up and find out what they are. And then you could just cut off and replace the barrels. So at least they're open-ended and they'd be a bit more detailed. And when I bang them, as I do, you know, they, um, they won't snap. But at this scale, the plastic parts might not be bad. And they're pretty clean, as I said there. There wasn't hardly any flash on the kit. So through we go again, and we've got another gun emplacement here. We've got quite a few. It's it's well armed and a bit more rigging and uh, that's it. So I don't even show you a final drawing of it together until we get to there is your paint job and basically it's just going to be light grey and anthracite grey and mid greys and grey on grey on grey on grey. It's just a, it's a warship and it's supposed to be you know quite stealthy. It's a very low bridge on it isn't it? It's really nice. It's um, just, just that little clear thing there. And, I mean, you really want to have this all painted before you put that acetate part on there because you don't want to have to mask that. That's going to be a bugger to clean up if you get paint on it, really. It, um, you'd, you'd ruin it. So, again, paint, 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 paint. And the last thing you'll put on are your, you know, your see-through parts here, your rigging and, um, and your gun assemblies. Now, you get some options um, how you want to paint it. It's grey, 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 anthracite grey, and a sort of tiger or something, or a panther. It's grey, 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 anthracite grey, and a 68. Grey, 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 anthracite grey, and a little symbol. And again, greys to the arseholes, and 206. So basically, why they even... They could have done that in little cutaways, you know? They could have saved themselves a page. Maybe they were trying to pad the bloody thing out. Basically, I could have just said, you can have the panther on there or plane all the way through. And then you've got that plane or three other options of decals. Because I can't see anything different. They all look exactly the same. What are you doing, Rebel? It's not even like a different makeup in the armament or anything. Pointless. All right, let's quickly 
do a dry fit of the hull, halves and the deck. I'm pleased to say the fit is actually really good, really good. Oops, uh, there are little slots everywhere for the uh, the rear deck or the main deck really uh, to fit in. Uh, so that is a very snug fit all the way along. It's very good. The bow, this part here actually does fit very well. It's just got to um, it actually pushes forward so. By the time you clamp that and glue it, that'll be fine. That'll be really good. I'll just put a little bit of tape around the bow there. And, um, so it's a good half a metre long, so that is a good size. You can also get this in 132nd scale. Italy's got one, and even Revell's got one. And they say it's the ultimate, you know, schnell boat kit. And great, if you've got the space, this is hitting my, you know, too big rule. Uh, my big rule is like 600 is the largest millimeters I will build a ship and this is 500 so um it's it's just on that that limit just under that limit but it's good it's a good size it's um being 172nd for a boat means we can really get some detail happening I'm getting pretty excited about this kit I'm going to order some um some barrels at least if not some photo etch I'm not going to order that wood deck do not need it these um these little wooden pieces here are so beautifully molded by Ravel so I think this kit holds a lot of promise and finally, this little bridge part just fits straight in. So, would I recommend this kit? It looks really good. Just don't order it out of Georgia through Amazon. <laughs> you know, the strangest part is, since I bought this, it was hard to find for so long. It was so hard to find for so long. That's why when I saw one on Amazon, it was only six shekels free delivery. So, essentially, a five shekel kit, $50 Australian. That's about $35 US. I thought, wow, great. Yeah, terrific. You know? Since then, some of the local shops have got this kit and they're only asking seven seconds for it. So I could have really bought it locally, but honestly, it has not been available here in Australia for a long time. But um, I certainly have learnt my lesson about buying from um, Georgia. Never again, never again. So there you go. But it's uh, very nice, very good fit, beautifully detailed, quite lovely. The only thing is there's not much going on on the, um, the hull, so I might do some my little trickiness with some nail tape for that and um, maybe we'll replace those railings and we'll put some metal barrels in and we might photo etch up here only because when I saw what they did with the photo etch it looks so good I think it's worth doing all right well that is my review <laughs> from the sick bed <coughs> of the uh, Revell um, German fast track craft well Schnell boat basically S100 class I hope you enjoyed that so um, like comment subscribe or become a Patreon member. If you're a Patreon member, you get to see my videos advert-free for um, the first 24 hours. Yeah. And you get to see them before everyone else. So, yeah. There you go. So, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. <laughs>